Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dr. Craig Jones Optimization Academy. In today's episode, we're going to dive into acromancia. Acromancia is a keystone gut microbe and essential for maintaining our gut lining. That gut lining is very important to preventing and managing the symptoms or side effects of leaky gut. Today's guest is Christina O'Connor. She's a registered dietitian with a rich background in microbiome science who's here to shed her insights on how acromancia can play a pivotal role in our health. From her early days in pediatrics to her current role at Pendulum Therapeutics, Christina has been a passionate advocate of understanding and harnessing the power of the microbiome to improve health outcomes. Stay tuned for more information on acrobatia, from basics of it to advanced applications in dietary practice and healthcare, and I can't wait to share it with you. We'll see you soon. So, Christina, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. I know. It's been a really, really long time coming. We met at A4M. For those that don't know, that's the big, the big, big uh, health and wellness conference is held in Vegas every year. And I just heard of Acromancia. That's going to be what we talk about a lot today. And I was like, oh, I keep hearing about this Acromancia and look at all these. And and I believe, uh, is, is it Colleen? Colleen, yes, yes, Dr. yes. Colleen Dr. Cutcliffe. Yeah, Dr. Cutcliffe was speaking on stage about it, and then I was like, I got to make a beeline to this pe- pendulum booth. And I thought she was going to be there, and there you were, and you were very well educated on it and answered all my questions. We got our account set up, and we've been giving everybody and their mama uh, acromancia or acromancia type product that needs it, right? And so it was really good to finally have you on the show. Now, when I took a look at your bio, you started off, looks like you began your career in health and wellness as a registered dietitian. Is that true? Yeah, that's okay. correct. So how did you get from that to working with Pendulum and working with gut health? Sure. So um, once I graduated and did my dietetic internship, I started my career in pediatrics um, and specifically in the NICU. Um, and so that's probably, people probably don't know much about, you know, the NICU environment, but I'll just give you a little view in um, premature babies. Um, and a lot of them have complications from something that's called necrotizing enterocolitis. And it's where part of the bowel actually dies. Um, it can be fatal or, you know, the baby has to have part of their uh, bowel uh, resected and cut out. So they spend the rest of their lives without part of their GI tract, which is, of course, devastating. Um, and we don't have an answer for why babies get necrotizing enterocolitis. Um, but the research is showing more and more that it's likely related to, uh, you know, the gut microbiome. So the organisms, either good or bad, the lack of good and, and too much of the bad. Um, and so I just became fascinated with, you know, this, this, this thing that's happening, this disease, this complication that's happening to preterm babies. Um, and so that led me down the path of, um, you know, the benefits of human milk um, for preterm babies. And then I started having kiddos of my own and just that that whole ecosystem that uh, exists between moms and babies and breast milk. Um, and so I just fell in love with the gut microbiome. And so then I came across Pendulum um, and they're doing some really unique things and they have the science to back it up. So as a clinician, um, I just became really interested in, you know, what they're doing. It's it's very different from any other probiotic company out there. Um, and so, yeah, the rest is history. So that's a really cool story because that's, uh, you know, that condition is something we really, I think I heard about that in medical school many years ago. And it's just, wow, you know, these things you, you read about, you learn about, and you, you see it in the real world. So it's really great that you were able to, you know, address that and help people with that now. When you say microbiome, and again, that's a term like it's relatively getting more buzz, if you will, over the last few years, because when people think about the gut, we think about the stomach and the small intestine, a large intestine, and then there's an environment in there. And I think a lot of times you, you get, you know, if you do any stool testing and you read it to your patient, you're like, you're like, oh my God, they'll see like, oh my God, I got stat, I got strep. Oh my God, I got this major thing. And you have to say, hey, no, this is part of the gut microbiome. So it's a very diverse population. And so when starting from there, if someone said, hey, Christina, what's this microbiome you speak of? How do you explain that? Yeah, so it's really the trillions of organisms um, that are living inside of the gut, like you described. Um, and we are the host, uh, and they are hanging out, um, doing a lot of really interesting things. Uh, you know, they have a huge impact on disease. Um, they have a huge impact on, uh, interestingly, and something that we're really um, focusing he on here at Pendulum, um, is food cravings. So there's actually a connection between 
between your gut and your brain. Um, and a lot of times those organisms will drive your food choices and your cravings. So, um, yeah, so it's just the trillions of organisms that are living within um, that environment. Um, and diversity is key. So, uh, you know, the more diverse, um, th that means that the gut microbiome is healthier. Good. So it's a, you know, you got good cops, bad cops, as I like to say on yeah. Science Month. But they all got to live together, right? They they yes. have a, one happy family of, it's like a fa it is family, right? So you got your, you know, you got black sheep, you got white sheep, but we all got to live together. Can we all just get along? Now, right. when, you know, I started learning about acromancia in most of the podcasts and a lot of things I've read about with acromancia, the first thing I hear is acromancia is a keystone microbe in the gut. And most people, when you say keystone, they're like, I can imagine what that is in architecture, but when we say keystone microbiome or sorry, keystone uh, micro strain or keystone gut strain, what does that exactly mean? Yeah, so I actually heard one of our providers um, describe it as uh, like the ecosystem and use Yellowstone as an example. So early on, we thought that the wolf in Yellowstone was bad and that we needed to get rid of the wolf. So, you know, we spent did all, everything that we could to eradicate the wolf from the park um, or from that ecosystem um, and we succeeded. And then what we saw was sort of this downstream effect of all of these other ecosystems being impacted. Um, and, uh, you know, failing to thrive. Um, and then we realized, oh, you know, the wolf is not the problem. Um, he is a critical part of this ecosystem. And without him uh, or her, uh, then everything else has sort of this um, failing downstream effect. So and so that's how you can think about acromancia um, as being a keystone strain. It's, it's really a critical part um, of the gut microbiome and has a really important job. Uh, and we notice and we're starting to notice more and more that when it's missing, um, there are some pretty significant issues. That's a great explanation that, that acromancia is a, you know, a critical or a central probiotic. And I'm sure there's other strains, but it's, it's important for our gut. Now, that being said, what is acromancia? Yeah. Um, so its full name is Acromancia mucinophila. Um, and so what that means is that it's a mucin loving organism um, and it's doing its function uh, on the gut barrier. So if you think about the gut barrier, um, it is you know semi permeable. Um, it needs to allow water and nutrients and, and things like that to pass through freely. Um, but there is a border um, that keeps out things like toxins. Um, and pathogenic bugs. Um, there's something called the mucus layer, um, and that that literally makes up that border. Um, our our chief medical officer kind of describes it as like flypaper. So you know that stuff that's not supposed to get through that barrier um, and into our systemic circulation kind of gets stuck in that that mucus flypaper. Um, because when that stuff gets through into circulation, um, our body has an inflammatory response. It says, "Oh, you know." there's something here that's foreign. Um, and so we need to address it. Um, and so acromancia, it's living in that mucus layer. Um, and it has a, honestly, it's a super weird function. So it's in there eating the old mucus, right? So like the mucus that has been there for, let's say, a couple of weeks and needs to go away, acromancia is in there feasting on it. Um, and when it does that, it stimulates our goblet cells, hey, it's time to produce a new fresh layer of mucus. Um, so you prevent the mucus layer from being kind of thin and patchy and worn out in some places. Um, and, and so then at, when acromancia is present, it's being refreshed. And so it's new and it's thick all the way across. And that's a great way to look at it. Cause sometimes when I explain to patients, I explain how important that mucin layer is. And then like, Hey, this acromancia is going to feed on the mucin layer. And you get that the common sense thing is like, wait, it's eating the layer that I need. Right. And, and I think that's, and again, it's like, you, you think you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound good for me. Right. But I love the fact that you said that when it, it's basically replacing that the old part of the mucin layer, so it's replenishing it. Right. And so with that being said, when, and this is part, you know, when acromancia, you take your acromancia, you know, we can talk about how we increase it with diet and other things like that. When acromancia starts to feed on the old mucin layer, is there a pathway for the body to make that new layer? Like, how is it laying the new layer down? 
Yeah, absolutely. So it is that relationship with our goblet cells um, that acromantia has. So as it eats and degrades that mucin layer, then the goblet cells get that that feedback. They get that message. Okay, we're we're breaking it down. You know, it's being consumed. So now it's time for us to produce that new fresh layer. Okay, and I like that outer inner uh, kind of analogy you sort of go down because the way I kind of explain it sometimes is that you imagine that your gut, the inside of your gut, it's a gated community, right? And your yeah. fancy house is inside the gut moment. And then you've got the outer gate where you got the first, lit, you know, so that's fancy. So those real fancy gated communities where there's a gate inside of a gate, right? And so the outer right. gate is like, hey, is this a delivery? Who's that delivery for? Right. Or, hey, you're not supposed to be here. Oh, yeah. Come on in. You know, come on in, Christina. You live here. Right. And then you get through that gate. I got the second gate. Right. And that second gate is last layer of defense. And that, you know, if you want to look at your endothelial layers and those tight junctions, that's that inner gate. Because once you're in there, you're in. Right. Or yep. once you're out, you're out. Right. And so I think it's just having those both in conjunction are super important for that gut permeability and the gut barrier. So. So now we know that acromancia, just based off that mucin layer, is great for the gut, uh, the structure, I'm sorry, the function, and that strength of that barrier layer. Some of the things we read about acromancia talks about its function with metabolism and specifically cravings and glucose and a hormone called GLP-1. How does it affect that? Yeah. So acromantia has really two, it's twofold. Um, it has two key functions. And so the one is producing or fixing the mucus layer and shoring up that gut barrier. Um, but then the second thing that it does um, is it produces propionate, which is a precursor to butyrate. And butyrate is really the star of the show. Um, it is, you know, incredibly important. Uh, butyrate, short, which is a short chain fatty acid, is super important um, for the health of our colonic cells. You know, I, I encourage your listeners, when I did a deep dive into, you know, what are the benefits of butyrate, um, there, there's just so many of them. But for us here at Pendulum, we were really looking at, well, what is, what is the role of butyrate in metabolism? Um, and acromancia um, helps to get that butyrate production started, um, and butyrate naturally stimulates our GLP-1 pathways. So we can double click into that when you're ready. But um, but yeah, acromancia does you know really two amazing functions within the gut microbiome. We did a podcast maybe a year and a half ago on butyrate and you know, how the benefits, how effective and efficient and amazing butyrate is for gut health, but. If acromancia is producing butyrate in the course of its normal metabolism, that mucin layer, do, would people still need to take butyrate? Or can acromancia produce enough butyrate to address some of those gut health issues? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I would actually not spend your money on butyrate supplements um, and instead consume the organisms, which acromancia is not the only one, um, consume butyrate producers uh, because that's actually their job um, and they are live organisms and they're in there interacting with the food that we're eating and they're interacting with each other. There's so much benefic beneficial crosstalk that's happening between um, good strains. Uh, and so their function is to ferment, the fiber that we're eating, and the result of that fermentation process is butyrate production, is short-chain fatty acid production. So Dr. Colleen um, Cutcliffe, our CEO and one of our scientists and our, our founders, um, she gives a really great explanation for that. You know, she she sort of says, if I had a million dollars for you, would you rather me just come to your door and like deliver it to you um, all in the suitcase? Or would you prefer that I just, you know, drive down the highway and just open the suitcase and scatter it all over the place? Um, you know, which would be uh, most effective. Um, and of course we all want it hand delivered right to the site where, you know, into our hands where we're going to use it. So we know acromancia is going to help maintain that use and layer and also help with that butyrate production. Um, what's its relationship with GLP-1? Yeah, great question. So um, acromancia is helping to produce butyrate, um, and butyrate actually binds to our L cells. Um, so intestinal L cells have butyrate receptor sites. Um, and so when butyrate is present, it binds, and that triggers your GLP-1 hormone to turn on. 
Awesome, awesome. And hmm, that's pretty cool. So that's going to turn on your GLP one. And unless people, you know, if you're living on a rock, I hope you're not. You've heard of semaglutide, you've heard of trisepatide, and there's a retatrotide coming out. And this, every time there's a new tide, and these medications are GLP, these peptides are GLP one agonists. In relation to that, I guess where I'm going with this, kind of like, hey, if you're taking acromancia, do you need butyrate? And so, from my understanding, is that acromancia is not going to produce the same amount of GLP one as some of the peptide medications would, but can they be used synergistically or used together? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So I kind of look at it like, um, you know, you're taking the drugs and you're giving your body um, a constant dose of GLP-1. Um, and so that's why people are, you know, GLP-1, um, I sort of think of it like, you know, you're headed to the to the gas station, you're filling up your car and the gas pump has that little trigger on it, right? That You can like, if it's working properly, um, just flip it on so that the gas tank will fill up and then it, it turns off when it's full. Um, that's sort of the role of the GLP-1 hormone, um, it signals to the brain like, hey, we're full, we've had enough food. Um, so when GLP-1 is working properly, um, you, you know, you feel satiated like you're supposed to after a meal um, and, you, you, you know, you're no, you're no longer hungry um, and it helps with those cravings. Yeah. So patients, uh, when they're taking the, the drugs, they're getting that GLP-1 all day, uh, every day. And so, that, you know, they will say actually that they're just really not interested in food. They have absolutely no no desire um, to eat. And so that's what GLP-1 does. But when it's working naturally, you know, it's sort of a, an ebb and flow. It rises and falls. Um, you're never supposed to be getting GLP-1 all day, every day. So a lot of times um, people will use the probiotics, acromancia, as well as additional butyrate producers, um, while they are taking the GLP-1 drug. So they're using the drugs to lose the weight. But then during that time, um, addressing root cause issues, right? Like fixing diet and lifestyle um, and uh, reversing dysbiosis um, because, you know, dysbiosis is is related to, um, you know, food cravings uh, and just overall GI symptoms. So uh, it's a perfect time to sort of get to those root cause issues so that as you taper off the medications, um, you know, because in my opinion, I don't think that we should be using them long term, um, then you have a system sustainable uh, solution in place. Perfect. Perfect. Now, can people just take acromancia? And where I'm going with that is uh, when I heard Colleen speak, and I've heard other doctors speak on in other presentations, they mentioned the role of polyphenols. And so a lot of times, hey, if I, for me personally, when I talk to my patients about acromancia, I'll ask them, like, hey, are you eating polyphenol-rich foods? And I, you have to explain it. He's like, what? And most people kind of are. If they're living a healthy lifestyle, so you're eating berries and you're eating onions and you're, you've got spinach and you've got, you're drinking coffee or green tea, why, is, why are polyphenols necessary for acromancia to work uh, most optimally? Yeah, great question. So acromancia, you know, we talked about earlier how it's eating the old mucin um, in the mucus layer, um, but its energy source is strictly polyphenols. And the research is very clear about that. Um, so it needs polyphenols to thrive and grow and colonize. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why it goes missing in so many people, because it, you know, it's not going to thrive and grow on uh, McDonald's. Um, so it really, um, if it doesn't have polyphenols, then it just sort of dies off. Um, and it's interesting because you can't replenish your acromancia levels um, from, you know, uh, your environment. Um, you know, you can't get it from anywhere uh, except for through now it's available in supplement form. But um, up until now, if you didn't have it or if it went missing, there was no way to sort of repopulate um, your acromancia. Now, with that said, if you do have like a little bit of struggling acromancia, just like hanging on for dear life within your gut microbiome, if you start to feed it polyphenols, um, it will return. So that is a way that, you know, a lot of providers that I talked to um, for years um, until Pendulum came along, they've been trying to use diet to naturally increase their patients' levels of acromancia. And so, you know, we here at Pendulum, we have a very uh, a specific strain of acromancia. There are many strains of acromancia. Um, and so we took the time to, you know, do an in vitro study and look at, well, which 
which polyphenols does our strain like? Does it like all of them? Does it like just some of them? Um, and out of all of the ones that we threw at it, it liked the best green tea extract, red grape seed, and pomegranate. So, you know, we put those three into a polyphenol booster product because, you know, the reality is, is it sometimes it's difficult for people for people to get uh, enough polyphenols in their diet. Okay. Great. Great. So you kind of hit one. And so now when the person's thinking, think about acromantia, it's like, hey, it sounds good. So far, so good. But why would someone besides a deficiency or not eating enough polyphenols, what other things can cause low acromantia? Yeah, so um, antibiotic use or even just a course of pharmaceuticals, it doesn't even have to be antibiotics. You know, um, prescription drugs that we take can uh, impact the gut microbiome negatively. Um, stress, travel, um, all of those things uh, can play a role uh, and, and, and reduce our levels of acromantia. Can someone have high acromantia without being on supplementation? Yes, they can. Um, and sometimes you will see that on a stool test. Um, and it's definitely worth mentioning. Um, we've seen and it's been brought to our attention that there are some correlative studies out there that talk about high levels of acromantia associated with uh, neurodegenerative disease like MS or um, Parkinson's. Um, and it's important to keep in mind that these are correlative studies. So they're, they're not uh, assuming that at high levels of acromantia are actually causing these disease states. Um, but there is something there. Um, there is a correlation. Um, and so some of the experts that we've talked to, you know, they've made the point that acromantia is not a pathogen. It's not a pathogenic organism. Um, and so it's not likely that high levels of acromantia are actually causing these disease states, but it's more of an indicator um, that something could be going awry. Something could be up. Um, because, you know, if you look at somebody who has MS, um, and they have, you know, they're in a, a an active disease state, then the acromantia levels will tend to be higher. And is that the body's response to um, the disease being in, in an active state? Um, but then, you know, when someone is in remission, acromantia levels can sometimes normalize. So there's still a lot to learn, I think, in terms of, you know, what what what's the right level of acromantia and, you know, what all that means for certain diseases. I read a study uh, a while back that mentioned that acromantia levels can uh, can get up regulated or increase in higher inflammatory states or so autoimmune inflammatory states yes. too. Uh, autoimmune yes. at, uh, inflammatory states too. So it may be an indicator that that person's immune system is getting more imbalanced or you're getting it to a flare. So that's another thing to to look at as well. Now yes. that being said, can you take too much acromantia and make your levels go high? Yeah, we haven't really seen that. Um, and, you know, if someone had high levels of acromantia, um, I, as a clinician, would not be nervous to give them, I wouldn't give them just, you know, single strain acromantia, but I would give them one of our multi-strain products that contains acromantia. I would feel comfortable doing that um, because of the additional uh you know, beneficial strains that are in some of our multi-strain products. Um, and like I said earlier, all of those strains are really working together to um, restore balance within the gut microbiome. Um, I have two relatives, um, my mother-in-law and my stepfather that both have Parkinson's. Um, and that neurodegenerative disease, there are a lot of um, studies that are talking about how uh, that could be related to dysbiosis going on in the gut. So I have no problem giving them um, additional acromancy uh, you know, in one of our multi-strain products. I think it's really, really helpful. Awesome. Awesome. Now you alluded to this a little bit, a little bit ago that knowing your acromantia levels is normally done by doing a stool test. Is that the primary means of checking acromantia levels? It is, um, you know, stool testing, uh, it's, it's still not an exact science, and, and we're doing some work here at Pendulum to really try to understand um, stool testing and the, the different technologies that are available. Um, but, but it is a good tool, um, and it's given us a lot of information you know, up until this point. Um, I think that there are uh, some symptoms that you can, you know, if you can't afford a stool test or you know, maybe you just don't want to do one, I think there are some symptoms that you can look for um, that, that might indicate that acromantia 
pregnancy levels are low or that you're, you know, you're dealing with intestinal permeability. Um, and a lot of times that looks like inflammation in the body. Okay. So it's kind of a trial. It's like, hey, I'm having some gut health symptoms, some symptoms that look like leaky gut. I, my digestion is poor. And it may say, hey, I wanted you to try acromancia, give the benefits and the patient tries. And if they get better, that's great. Yep. And if they don't, then it's like, from our conversation, hey, you know, let's talk about your diet, which we should do in advance. But it's like, hey, are you, you have your polyphenol list? And it's like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm not eating any of that. Okay, let's add that and then try yeah. it again. So that's kind of one way to look at it as well. So, hmm. So now that we could kind of got to that point, what are some of the health benefits of acromancia? We've talked about permeable gut, we've talked about GOP1. What's the breakdown? Like, what are the good things about taking acromancia? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that it can be helpful in so many different areas. You know, we uh, here at Pendulum, of course, we studied our our products in um, patients that have full-blown type 2 diabetes. So, coupled acromancia um, with some other butyrate-producing strains, um, and we were able to lower uh, patients' A1C and their postprandial glucose spikes um, pretty significantly, uh, actually comparable to, you know, what met- metformin or some of the other uh, blood glucose lowering medications on the market are able to do. Um, so, so that's one uh, area that we've been able to, you know, clinically study and publish on. Um, but then I manage our healthcare relationships here at Pendulum. So I'm actually talking to providers, um, you know, every day and hearing from them, you know, how they're using our strains. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, there are a lot of, you um, uh, there, there's a lot of research out there now that's talking about how um, skin issues like eczema and psoriasis and acne um, are related to intestinal permeability. So, you know, we have a lot of naturopathic physicians out there that specialize in um, dermatology, and they're using acromancia and some of our other strains to really kind of repair the gut um, to heal the skin. Um, and so that's one really interesting application. Um, and then we're all also seeing a, a number of providers that are using acromancia for um, inflammatory bowel issues. So like things like microscopic colitis and ulcerative colitis seem to be responding really well. Um, and it makes sense, you know, um, we're certainly not surprised um, because, you know, if you're repairing the gut, then you are really reducing inflammation. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. Definitely great benefits there. So a lot of things that are associated with, you know, gut dysfunction and leaky gut. So you mentioned like skin issues, right? Acne is a big one, right? And sometimes we'll see eczema with leaky gut and gut inflammation. Fatigue, we'll see that. Leaky gut. I've seen hair thinning. I mean, yes. there's just bloating, weight gain. I mean, leaky gut, just mood issues because obviously yeah. your gut's producing serotonin, right? Most of your serotonin is producing the gut, right? And so even immune system dysfunction, right? Because that's our immune system is that our guts, man, they're like, you know, they don't get enough credit, man. They don't get enough credit. Yeah, because like what, us, right? who... Hippocrates, right, R- way back in the day, like start said that like it all starts in the gut. Like he was so on to something, and I, I, you know, I feel like we're just now waking up to that. Um, but you know, it just it just makes good sense. Um, and yeah, like so, you mentioned um, the gut brain access, you know, mood and um, anxiety, and uh, we actually have a, a third party that's doing a study um, using our pendulum glucose control, which is our five strain formulation, um, and they're looking at it in bipolar disorder. So, you know, they're, they're obviously on to something. Um, and so, yeah, we're enrolling, not we, but they are enrolling um, study participants right now. And I, I can't wait for that study to come out. All right, people. So you're watching this podcast and you're like, hey, this acromancia sounds amazing. I love the benefits. I'm gonna go get me some acromancia, which good thing to do. And you Google search it and you go to Amazon, you go somewhere else. And you're like, oh, I got acromancia. And you're going to see some products and they're going to say, live acromancia you're going to see some products and they're going to say pasteurized acromancia what's the difference great question um yeah so there is a uh 
a legitimate pasteurized acromancia product available on the market. Um, and pasteurized acromancia is essentially um, the organism, uh, you know, when you think about pasteurization, uh, we like that, you know, it keeps our food safe um, because it kills organisms um, in our milk and in our orange juice and, and things like that. Um, but when it comes to probiotic supplementation, you know, the pasteurized version of acromancia is essentially um, a dead organism. So it doesn't actually even meet the definition of a probiotic because a probiotic is a live uh, organism. So um, it is more accurately a postbiotic because you actually are getting some benefits from um, the dead organism. Um, things like uh, P9, which is a protein uh, that helps to stimulate GLP-1 naturally that acromancia produces, um, and something else called a muc 1100 which helps to modulate the immune system. Um, so those two uh, those two things you can absolutely get from pasteurized acromancia. Um, and, but with our product, um, you are getting live acromancia. Um, but you're also getting pasteurized because that's just the nature of, um, you know, the probiotic industry. Uh, you will get some dead organisms and you will get some live. Um, and so live acromancia is able to produce all of those things. Like I just mentioned, P9 and AMUC 1100. Um, but it is also able to interact with the mucin layer like we talked about earlier. So a dead organism is not going to be in there cleaning up old mucin. Um, and so the goblet cells are not going to get that stimulation um, and that message that, hey, it's time to produce new mucus um, because the acromancia is not going to be interacting uh, with the mucus layer in that way. It's also not going to be interacting with the food that we're consuming. So the polyphenols and the fiber, um, it's not going to be, you know, uh, get, getting those polyphenols and using it as an energy source. Um, and then lastly, it's not going to be interacting with the other beneficial bacteria within the gut microbiome, which is so important. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the diversity, uh, all of those strains are really working together to help support each other um, and to increase uh, and be more abundant, restore balance. Okay. Good, good. So, so now you're at a point where, all right, we got your acromancy. I'm starting to feel good. This is great. And the challenge now becomes how long should I be taking this? Right. And so is acromancy a for life supplement or for a season supplement? Yeah, you know, I kind of, as a clinician, I'm I'm more in the camp of cycling probiotics, um, and you know, not taking uh, one organism for too long. Um, let me back up for a second because we do recommend that you give our products um, at least ninety days, and that is from our clinical study that we did on the glucose control. Um, it you need to give it at least ninety days before you, you know, make your assessment on whether or not, you know, it's working for you. Um, some people it works sooner um, and some people it, it takes a full 90 days. Um, it takes time to make changes to the gut microbiome. So, you know, this is, this is really kind of a marathon. Um, but in terms of taking it forever, um, I am more of a fan of, uh, you know, taking certain strains um, and then cycling on and off. There are certain strains that I love that really work well um, with my gut microbiome. And I always find myself going back to them. Um, I think that acromancia is one of those that I like to go back to because there are so many negative um, insults uh, that affect um, the gut microbiome, specifically acromancia, like, you know, improper diet, stress, travel, those types of things. I never travel without my, my pendulum products. <laughs> I like that. I had right yeah. yeah. And a lot of times with our patients here, we'll say, you know, say, We'll start, you want to get them like, hey, go to the month, but just know this is about a 90 day protocol, right? We, perfect world, you want to do 90. And there's some people like, ah, I don't really feel anything in the first month. And we'll say, hey, keep going a little bit longer and then watch what you're eating, check out your diet. Because just like anything else we do, whether it be hormones, peptides, there's no magic bullet, man. Like you got you to gotta work out. You got to get active. You have to clean up your diet as you can, avoid foods that you're sensitive to, those triggers of inflammation, right? And just kind of get into that anti inflammatory state of living and you see the benefits of it. So it's always like check everything else if you feel like it's not working as well. Now, when a person starts acromancia, is there, you mentioned that give it some time to work and is that, you know, that buildup period or the body's adjusting to it. 
do people feel anything in that first few weeks? Because I know on the website it talks about, hey, you might feel a little bit of slight gut discomfort when first starting. Um, how much of that do you guys see? Yeah, it really depends on the person's starting gut microbiome. I think that if you're sensitive um, and you have GI symptoms, I think that a low and slow approach um, is really best. Um, but, you know, everybody's different uh, things that, you know, some people really respond well um, and they, you know, will write in that like, oh, I dropped six pounds, like just in a, you know, a couple of weeks, um, which is really cool. And another thing that we hear is that um, people have a pretty dramatic change in their food cravings. Um, so they will, our testimonials are, they're hilarious. People will say like, um, I enjoyed eating a salad today, or, you know, I'm, I'm finding myself reaching for fruits and vegetables as a snack, which, you know, I've never done that before. Or, you know, I'm no longer the cookie monster. I can just eat two cookies and, and walk away. Um, and I think that really comes down to like fixing that dysbiosis because, you know, those organisms that, you know, we don't really want overpopulated in our guts um, tend to feed on things like refined sugars and carbohydrates. And then you bring in these good guys that feed on things like fiber and polyphenols, um, then they're saying we're in charge and they're sending the signals to the brain that, you know, this is what we need to survive. So it makes sense. It does. It does. So great segue, Christina, because you mentioned losing weight, you mentioned appetite, you mentioned metabolism. So pendulum uh, it's funny, a patient brought it up to me because, you know, I had her on acromancia and she was like, hey, what do you know about this uh, metabolic or no, it was a GLP-1 probiotic? And she's like, hey, what do you know about this? And I was like, uh, thank God it's an email because I don't have to answer you right away. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what is this shit? You know, and so I, I go to the website. I'm like, wait a minute, they got some new products here, right? And I saw the GLP-1 and the metabolic daily. So let's talk about those. And they're, they're new. I think they've been out, what, about three months or so? Uh, yes. Yeah. The GLP-1 yeah, product yeah. launched in March. Let's talk about those new uh, pendulum products and Metabolic Daily and the GLP-1 probiotics. So what are those and what are the benefits, and the difference between the two? Absolutely. So I'd like to think of our glucose control product as being sort of at the top of the pyramid um, and understanding um, that product and the strains in that product really kind of helps you to understand all of our other products downstream. Um, so the glucose control is clinically studied. Um, it contains acromancia as well as additional butyrate producers. Um, but, you know, it is it is a very strong product um, and it is our, our pricier uh, product. Um, and it has has to be cold chain shipped. It has to be refrigerated. Um, so that can be a little bit of a turnoff for some people. Um, so we started developing some of these other products just to make them, you know, more accessible. Um, and so the metabolic daily is just a less potent version of the glucose control. So it's the same five strain formulation. Um, it's just not as potent. So great for an everyday probiotic or, you know, somebody who's dealing with just a little bit of insulin resistance or, you know, you have a diet, a uh, uh, family history of, um, you know, diabetes, and you're making those diet and lifestyle changes and trying not to head that down that path. Metabolic Daily is a great product to add. Um, and the GLP-1, that's our newest product. Um, and really, we've been talking about this GLP-1 story since um, Pendulum's inception. You know, this is not um, new for us. It's just coincidental that, you know, all of the hype became around GLP-1 here recently. We couldn't believe it. You know, we just, we wanted to get it out there like, hey, there is a way to naturally increase your GLP-1 um, through the gut microbiome. Um, and so that product is a combination of acromantia and Clostridium butyricum. And so those are two of the most powerful butyrate producers um, in all of our products. Um, so you're really getting that, that, uh, butyrate production, which is stimulating the GLP-1 hormone, um, which is really helping with satiety and food cravings. We actually studied that product um, in food cravings. 91% of the study participants um, reported a reduction in their food cravings. So it's pretty cool. That's really, really cool. And so the way I've been doing it, and it's only been three months, is, you know, when I have the patient in front of me, it's like, all right, we got some gut dysfunction here, and I want to address, you know, gut permeability and metabolism and leaky gut and gut, all the good things we've been talking about, right? And so now we're at that, we're at that fork in the road where it's like, I got acromancia, I got 
the metabolic daily. I've got the GLP one probiotic. And what I've been doing, what we've been doing, our practitioners here is like, Hey, you know what? I see there's some gut stuff I want to work on. There's gut health to address. And it's like, all right, how are you doing with your sugar and carb cravings? Oh man, I can't stop eating bread. Okay. I'm pushy towards GLP one probiotic. If you're like, yeah, cravings are good, but you know, I might bloat a little bit when I have carbs or I have a history of high glucose. My A1C runs a little bit high, or I'm just trying to lose weight in conjunction with my program. I'm pushing you towards metabolic daily. And if you're just like, yeah, I, I just got the bubble best Dr. Jones, then we're going acromance here by itself. Right. You know? <laughs> so, and, and I think, you know, having those options is great. You know, it's great for the patients, right? Great for the providers too, because now we have, it's not a one shoe fits all approach anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to get you to write a protocol for us because it sounds like you really have it dialed in. <laughs> oh man, I'm working on it, man. It's like, look, man, everybody, everybody get acromancia. Everybody. It's like, it's like you get acromancia, you get acromancia. It's like, you know, Oprah and those damn cars, right? You know, we're just throwing at people. It's, like, it's a lot. And, you know, we've been pretty good. I've only had one patient who, you know, was like, I had a shoe. I had two. I think out of the hundreds so far, I met a couple that, you know, and it's just anything, right? Any supplement, any treatment, you're always going to have some people that's like, you know what, let's, let's step back and let's get the microbiome a little bit more foundationally set. Then we'll come back to it. Right. So again, cause you really shouldn't be reacting to acromancia cause it's in your gut, right? It's just like, this is something your body needs. So it may have been something else. So we always keep that in mind. Yeah. Something you might also want to keep in mind is that uh, all of our products contain inulin, a very, very small amount, but sometimes that can be problematic for people. Um, the Metabolic Daily is our formula that is inulin free. So if you have somebody that's like, eh, it's not working, I'm not feeling so great, try the Metabolic Daily. See, so breaking out the pan. Yeah. You're right, right that down. <laughs> yeah, it's a good little tidbit. I do have one more question before I get you out of here. So, when, you know, especially, you know, with us as docs, we, we use a lot of the, uh, the Pendulum Pro line, which is basically, it's the same line. There's some minor differences I've seen there, but essentially it's what we keep in the office here. And I see there's an Acromancia 100 and there's an Acromancia 500. There are Acromancia Pro 100 and 500. And if I'm not mistaken, the Acromancia 500 is just a stronger, more concentrated form of the Acromancia. Um, yes. Is any process of, hey, I'm going to start you on the Acromancy 100, give it three months, and the delay moving, let me give you the 500? Or is it like, hey, I did your gut testing, I did your stool analysis, oh my God, you have no Acromancy, this is insane, I'm going to put you on the Acromancy 500. How do your docs and how do you guys look at those two? Yeah, I think you can actually go either way. Um, I think, again, if you have somebody who is sensitive and you just really kind of want to test the waters, the Acromancia 100 is like a really great place to start. Um, but if you have somebody who, you know, you're dealing more with like the inf the inflammation um, and they're, you know, you're, they're not more on the sensitive GI side, then I think you can absolutely 100% go for the Acromancia 500. We know that that is a safe and efficacious dose of Acromancia because that's that's actually the level of acromancia that's in our um, pendulum glucose control. Um, so that's a, a studied dose um, that is, you know, uh, very effective and safe. Um, so you can feel totally confident, confident going straight to the acromancia 500. Uh, groovy, groovy and appreciate it. All right. I think my, I think my acromancia time's up. I think we're, I think we're good. No, I'm, I'm so happy that we made time for this. I feel like I was, I was chasing y'all down, man. I was like, Where's, where's, do I got to call Hallie? Do I got to call Hallie Berry? You know, <laughs> like I've been trying to reach out to this podcast. I see you on the website. You got to know somebody, right? So, no, man, I, I'm really thankful that we had a chance to do this. And so I want to do the recap here and you can tell me if I missed something, right? And add on. So, Acromancia, this is my takeaways and I hope my listeners' takeaways, uh, takeaways are as well. Acromancia, Keystone, Gut Probiotic Strain or key, Keystone Gut Micro, essential for maintaining the gut. Uh, gut barrier, essential for metabolism and the natural production of GLP-1. It really thrives on a healthy gut and it thrives on polyphenol. So make sure that you have to help part of your diet. Acromancia, when you're low in acromancia, you'll see a lot of the leaky gut symptoms, difficulty with metabolism, maybe even high blood sugar. Uh, it, this is not, so this ain't cocaine, you can't overdose. We might leave that in there. Leave on. <laughs> I'll leave that to the editors, right? So, <laughs> this is not cocaine not gonna overdose on acromancia but obviously when it's high you can take a look at it. if there's anything uh, inflammatory or autoimmune going on what else we got 
Um, you guys got two. There's a di- there is a difference between live and pasteurized, so you will get more benefits from live. And you guys have two great or three great strains. Glucose control is the Cadillac or the who drives Cadillac? Good Lord, yeah. I'm all I'm so old, yeah. man. No, 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 no. The glucose control is Bentley, and then you got some really you got some Porsches. You got some Porsches and some you know some like. A BMW, you know, that's your, your metabolic daily and your glucose control. Still great. And hey, sometimes you don't need to drop, drop, that, drop Bentley. Who are you showing off for? And then, you know, what else we got here? And I think we're, did I get it all? Did I miss you anything? You got it all. Yes. Come on over. Work for Pendulum. Oh, you man. Uh, look, man, don't don't tempt me. Things get, <laughs> things get bad around here sometimes. Don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I appreciate your time. Now, for our listeners who want to learn more about acromancia and optimizing their gut health, where do they get more info? Yeah, we have a great website, um, Pendulum Life dot com. Um, and if you scroll over to the healthcare side, you're going to get a lot of the science, the clinical studies, you know, the clinical studies that we're currently getting ready to uh, be involved in. Um, it was all created by a team of um, really smart registered dietitians. So there's, uh, you know, information about the strains, why they're important, and then a really nice nutrition guide to help you just, um, you know, eat the proper diet to create that microbiome diversity. Awesome. Awesome. And I will put those websites and those resources in our show notes uh, for the podcast. So you'll see that below. Christina, thank you so much. I am so glad you took some time out of your day on a Friday, no less. And um, man, this was, this was great. And I really appreciate you and your time. Can't, can't express that enough. I learned a lot from this and I hope my listeners did too. We, we should do this again. We should do this again yeah. when, when you guys make more versions of Acromancia. And so, I want you to take us home. Is there anything else you want to say to our listeners and watchers out there before we get out of here? Yes, you can bet. We will actually, we will absolutely be doing it again because, um, you know, we're not stopping at Acromancia now that we've unlocked this technology. Um, we are going to bring, we're committed to bringing more novel strains, um, to the, the supplement market. Um, and, you know, we're really sort of helping to unlock this targeted precision, um, probiotics that are, you know, not just go take a probiotic. That's what you need. It's like, oh no, you need this probiotic to, to fix and help with, you know, this condition. So really exciting things um, in the next coming years. So we will absolutely do it again. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry it took us so long to get here. Thanks so much for having me as a guest. No worries. We'll see you soon. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. This is Dr. Greg Jones and the Optimization Academy. And I can't wait to see you again at the next show.